Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is our prospect 10 list where you get our bonus content from the Key Collector app of five extra books. So let's go ahead and start with our number 15 book. At number 15, we have Sai Bai Chi, The Battle for Independence, number one. So many people have been um, wondering what could be the next spawn. And if you were collecting books around this time, Witchblade was a really, really popular character. This character is coming back after a five-year hiatus, so there's going to be additional issues coming out in Volume 1. A recent Kickstarter campaign by uh, Mark Silvestri and other content creators for the this property raised 104k. So there's proof in the pudding that there's people that support this character. Uh, there was also a TV show uh, a little bit back in the day. I definitely like this play, and it's only five bucks. At number 14, we have What If Peter Parker Becomes Punisher Number 1, The Action Figure Variant. So I, for, I first learned about this book watching Drunken Chat, and uh, Ultra Maximus was doing a spec matrix, matrix on action figure variants. He covered every single one, and part two of this, he was talking about action figure variants that have qualifiers. This was one of one of one of the books that met one of those qualifiers. I think it's good spec for the What If Disney Plus series. If Disney was serious about maybe testing the waters with the Punisher, they may introduce this character in the show this summer. So I like this play, and it's only fifteen to twenty five bucks. At number thirteen, we have Blade, the exclusive theater edition. This is a relatively unknown book. I think a lot of us hadn't really seen this one before it was nominated the quality of the paper on this was not it was more in a newspaper style uh when this book came out this this came out uh, as the movie came out obviously that's wesley snipes on the cover so this is they've been out there quite a while and we've got blade coming in uh to the mcu before we know it there are not 500 blade books to go out and get uh, so this is a this is a very interesting blade cover. It's a nice cover. It's going to be hard to find in, in high grade, and uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for it. At number twelve, we have the Incredible Hulk number four forty one. So this book uh, features uh, She Hulk on the cover. There's also a newsstand price variant for this book, and I think it's a great cover to the Pulp Fiction homage. This is not a book to sleep on it's about twenty dollars and it's plentiful on ebay currently i would say stay tuned we are going to do down the rabbit hole segment on she hulk covers and this book is certain to be on the list this is richie's idea and we're gonna run with it here soon at number 11 we have bitter root number nine the new jack city homage fairy all right so here we've got bitter root nine this is a, an homage to new jack city uh, the movie poster Bitter Roots, uh, a super hot property at the moment, uh, given that it's been optioned and is is definitely coming to the screen. Uh, you know, these types of books really get collectors going, and this one, I think, has got a lot of room to run. Coming in at you for number 10, we have King James, the King of Basketball, the jock cover from 2004. Have you heard that card people are getting into comics? Because I've heard a lot about that. Really? And... You gotta think if card people are getting into comics, then why aren't our athlete themed comics getting hot? And here's an example this isn't as much of a spec book as, as a cornbread book because, but a lot of people aren't paying attention. 9.8 of this are, are selling. Interesting thing I find about this book, King James starring LeBron James, is there were 10 covers for this. This was a giveaway book. There were four covers available by mail-in, four at Kroger, one available at Military Commissaries, and one general market cover. I don't, I can't even remember which one this is, but I do know that this is the most common cover, and maybe what makes it a hottest selling one is it is the most generally available one out there. I mean, this, this one is not... The most hard to find. We'll be going in our roundtable over the one LeBron James comic that's really hard to find. But 
anyhow, we do have the upcoming movie starring King James. So I think if you put it all together, if you put a popular athlete like LeBron, you've got a movie coming up, you've got a popular artist like Jock, uh, I, and then you've got a giveaway comic that even though this cover is, is the most common cover, still it's hard to find a high grade. So I would highly recommend keeping a lookout for it. it it's out there. All right, next book at number nine. We have Web of Spider-Man, number one. I love this book. First appearance of the Volta uh, Voltarians, and it's an early gorgeous black cover by Charles Vess. So here's the here's the stats. Uh, there's 1,979.8s on the CGC census. Uh, plenty of direct raw copy editions on the market, but far less newsstands in the wild. Scoring a 9.8 newsstand are very, very slim. This vintage book has room to grow, but has been overshadowed by other Spider-Man titles. Great cover for Spider-Man Spider fans, so go get them. And this is a big shout out to the homies on IG. V Comics, Bros Before Heroes, 9.9 .9 newsstands. They're always sharing the love for the for 80s and 90s books. This was a community pick, and I love this pick. I'm always rooting for the community. I've been I've been waiting and waiting to nominate this one, and I'm glad I made it this week. The question is, how many newsstands made it out alive? Raw newsstand copies are criminally priced around twenty to thirty dollars. At number eight, we have the Amazing Spider-Man number four thirty. Now, this is a, a great, great cover. I think this has been grossly undervalued for, for years. It's a low print run. You know, Comicron says there was about 67,000 print run during during a time when, you know, the collapse of the comic industry, if, if that's what you want to call it, very, very scarce uh, in high grade. There's only 332 copies in, in nine eights, you know, with the collapse, I, I, I think that this cover was never truly appreciated. You look at uh cosmic ghost Rider and, and the love that, that he got, this is carnage, the, his symbiote embodying silver surfer. And so you have a cameo in this cover of the first Carnage Cosmic. This one is is one to have for sure. With the movie coming out, this this is a low hanging fruit for sure. At number seven, we have Canto number three. Yeah, so this is the first appearance of Hermit the Sorcerer and you get a cameo of the Shrouded Man. Low print run and the second print is pretty scarce. Uh, this book has plenty of room to grow, so buy the dip. If this issue is adapted on screen, the giant octopus will indefinitely be a memorable theater or screen experience. Raw copies go anywhere from $15 to $25. Yeah, and I'll say that Canto is just sky's the limit for this property. I believe the Canto property is, is separate from IDW, so whoever puts in more money with Will Smith and J Jada Pinkett Smith's production company. Money's being pumped into this. There could be like candle board games, candle video games. This is just super ripe animation pro uh, property. I think this could be the most successful American created animation out there for spec. For number six, we have Ultimate Fallout 4, the Lamole foil variant. In my opinion, this is a very interesting book. It, it has a chance uh, to become a monster down the down the road. We will see. Uh, let me give you some numbers. The traditional cover A of Ultimate Fallout for uh, the CGC census, there's almost 10,000 books out there. The Pacelli second print has over 1,200 on the census. The, the other second print has over 1,800 on the census. Uh, oh, the Jurdevic. The one that's in 9.8 pushing, well, it is it is sold for over 10K now. That has almost 700 on the census. Uh, granted, this is a newer book, but this has 54. Uh, Lamole was a, a 
correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't attending, but it was a Comic Con. It's a Comic Con that that is in Mexico City. So officially, this is a foreign book. They have a track record of doing variant covers that are basically replicas of the original cover, but but a foil variant, and that's what this is. The original art, which I think is a plus. It it is a foreign book. There is a divide between traditional collectors and foreign collectors, and I think this is a book that's is gonna branch that or uh, bridge that divide this just came out last year so that census will be going up but the reported print run was a thousand if that is true that would make this the the most rare version of that book of this this modern grail out there so uh it's not a guarantee there's there's some question marks but i really like the chances of this especially going from where it is which right now is selling from between 100 and 150 raw. Uh, there have been some five, six hundred dollar sales and nine point six, but that that falls under every other one of those copies right now. So I think it is undervalued. Tony, I I love love this pick, man. It's really good. If anybody's ever seen this this book in person, it just pops. I mean, the foil on this is absolutely stunning. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful book, and I I do think it has legs. Will it catch the other ones? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but right now, it's wildly, wildly undervalued, I think. At number five, we have The Magnificent Miss Marvel, number 13, second print. All right. So this is the first appearance of a new character called Amulet. This is the, the second print. It had a lower print run than the first print. What I would say is that all the Miss Marvel books at this point were relatively uh, underordered. We all know that she's getting her own TV show. Uh, and there's speculation that we may see this character uh, in that show in the first or second season. Uh, her supporting cast is growing. This is a character of Middle Eastern descent and, and, and one that was received very well when this book came out and, uh, and, and one definitely to keep an eye on. Uh, the second print is, is very attractive, but I certainly wouldn't pass up on the first print if you saw that either because uh, it wasn't as though this book was, you know, printing 100,000 copies at this point. So a good pick and character that I think is going to uh, take the world by storm here pretty soon. At number four, we have The Amazing Spider-Man, number 431. Yeah, much like uh, issue 430, right around the, the, the collapse of the comic book industry, this book didn't get a lot of love. It's a low print run, much the same, like 430, about 67,000, according to Comicron. And sixty-seven thousand—that that is a small, small print run. Get this book in a high grade. You're looking at spending about four hundred bucks. It's the first full appearance. The Carnage symbiote embodying uh, Norman Rad. You know the Silver Surfer. When everything was right in the world. You know when Jim Lee was doing comics, and you had surfboards popping out of a damn comic book. <laughs> uh, Amazing Spider-Man 431 with the movie coming out. This is a book to get because I guarantee that when that movie comes out, this book will be about 600, 700 bucks. So don't be shocked when, when you're seeing a market report of this book selling at that price. Yeah, this Cosmic Carnage book has always had a little bit of a cult following. You know, the Marvel and the bankruptcy years... You know, those books are, are pretty tough to come by. So, um, you know, this one's always had some love from the community. I think as eyes and then people grow on it, 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 it could have room to run. At number three, we have Darth Vader number 13, the Hastings variants. R.I.P. Hastings. Mama! Mama! Yeah, rest in peace, Hastings. Uh, I had found out that <laughs> this, this company had, um, had been bankrupt. So there's no more Hastings variants coming out in the future. This is a, a really beautiful book that I had talked about on Drunken Chat t uh, two weeks ago. And it, this is part of a connecting variant set for Hastings. Uh, connects with uh, Star Wars 13, Darth Vader down one. And then this is the third book in the set. There's not many Dr. Afra books that have her centric on the cover. And this is just, I thought was just brilliant. Uh, she's Team Vader here going against the Rebels. And what happens in this story arc is that Luke Skywalker takes his ship and rams into Darth Vader's TIE fighter. And that's why it's called Vader Down. 
Vader is going against ev everything that the Rebels are throwing at him. Nothing much too cool happens in the guts of this book. However, you do see Triple Zero disguise himself as C-3PO and surprise shock Luke Skywalker unconscious, which was kind of cool in the end of the story. This is quite scarce, such an awesome cover that I felt like I wanted to share with the community. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It's only valued at ten bucks. I I first saw this cover on Drunken Chat with uh with Phil when he was doing a Doctor Afro top five covers, and I was floored because I had never seen the cover, and I was shocked. First thing I told Phil, it looks like a movie poster. This is so undervalued. It, it's a it's a crime. It it is at such a beautiful cover. Coming in at number two. We have X-23, Diodato variant. Many of us that were around in uh, 2018 remember this book very well. Um, it popped right out of the gate. Beautiful Diodato cover. In the guts and on the cover is your first appearance of the X-Assassin, which is a clone of uh, Laura Kinney, X-23, who is currently going by Wolverine in today's comics to get this book retailers basically had to meet or exceed a hundred percent of orders of x23 issue number five cover a and if they did that they could order this variant you know as much as they wanted the cover a for this book comicron has around twenty seven thousand ordered on number five thirty five thousand ordered don't ask me to do the math. I won't even try, but I just know I don't see this book around. At one point, this book was at about $65, and then it simmered around $50, and it just kind of stood at $50 for about two years, got down to about $40, and now I, I'm seeing them online for $15, $20. I mean, nine eights were over $150. This is also the second part of this clone story arc with uh, Laura Kenny, Gabby, and... <clears throat> Four of the 10 clones that were made of Laura Kinney by a genetic um, doctor. And of the, t of the 10 clones, six died, four lived, they escaped. And basically the 10 that supposedly died, the one of those clones was the ex-assassin, which was sent after Laura Kinney to kill her. But unfortunately, other things happen. I won't spoil it for you, but I could tell you this. The the clone who's on that cover lived, and the issues after this is an awesome story arc. But I could personally see something like this in an animation or a possibly X-23 down the road MCU situation. But even if it is... If not, no content is created out of this, this book is a must-have for every comic book collector, especially if you're into X-23, you're into the next-gen characters, and, and Wolverine. And for our number one book, we have Thor number two. Any of the versions. Yeah, okay, so what's going on with this book here? <sighs> Listen, anybody who's been on social media may or may not have seen uh, Natalie Portman as Jane Foster, she is going to absolutely kill it in this role. And I think demand for her books are going to go crazy, uh, absolutely crazy next year. So so what's the deal with this book? Well, Thor 2 is actually her first full appearance, which I, I think a lot of people may not know. So we, we saw um, glimpses of her for, for several issues prior to this. Um, she showed up in Hawkeye, Deadpool, Number zero with the first cameo of Spider Gwen. That was cosplay, but that's the first time we see the character looks like. She's in Thor God of Thunder 25. The book that most people have specced on for this character is Thor number one because she's on the cover, right? So cameo and cover generally becomes the book for a character. I acknowledge that. Uh, but she only shows up in the very end uh, of that book in, in a cameo role. This book is her first full appearance, but it, it seems wildly slept on relative to her other books. So you have here the cover A, um, which you can be you can find this for cover if you look. And there's a couple of one in twenty fives. There is um, a Ribich one in twenty five, which I frankly like a lot, but she's not on the cover. It pairs well with the one in fifty for issue number one, uh, but Thor is on the cover of that book. If you want her on the cover. There's a Samney 
um, one in 25 as well, which is also a very good play. Both of those books go for 20 to 25 bucks. You know, in the market right now, um, these buys seem as compelling as anything I can think of. Um, I really believe that Jane Foster is going to absolutely blow people away as Thor. I, I don't know if we're going to see her beyond this or if she's going to die in this movie. It's hard to say. My guess is that Marvel might run with her for a while. I think she could be a pretty big deal. And uh, if that's the case, um, you know, these books are going to go absolutely crazy. So, um, you know, that's the reason why I like this book. Yeah. And Ben, I, I want to add, I mean, she she's Thor in the in the champions. Seems like she's got avenues that, she, you know, in case it shortens here, it could go somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, people forget she also had a, a romantic uh, relationship with Sam Wilson when he was Captain America. So, I mean, could that yes. be something? Yes. I Absolutely. don't know, but, but but who knows? But I I think I think she's going to go beyond more than just this one movie. I think the character is too big and too important. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you for tuning in to the Tales from the Flipside channel. Make sure to like and subscribe our channel, and check out our new show that's coming up on Thursday, Old School Comics, hosted by Dino, our CEO. Oh yeah, don't miss it.